Okay. So, okay. So, yeah, we're just gonna, this is um, meeting up with Tim Freak, and we're just gonna chat about non duality and on a few other things, whatever comes up. <laughs> um, so, yeah, so I was interested. You were talking earlier about um, that you think the message of non-duality is is kind of not um, not how you see it that there is a person that that's kind of obvious so, so so for me the my my phase where i was really influenced by non-duality was a long time ago now mm -hmm. um and I, that was under the influence of Srinivas Gadatta Maharaj and then Ramesh Belsakar and various things that were going on and experiences i was having because, and this is key for me now, it's the idea which is prevalent is that somehow these experiences are direct. Mm -hmm. They don't involve ideation. And I think that's entirely wrong. I think all experiences involve ideation. If you can't discern what something is as opposed to something else, even if that something is it's all one or it's non-dual or it's bliss or anything, Anything which you can go, you know, it's timeless rather than time, whatever it is, you must be able to discern that, otherwise you wouldn't be able to say That's it, that experience is different to this experience. And that discernment is coming through ideas. And that's what ideas do. We, have, we are psychobiological systems, and we sense and make sense, and we're doing it with everything. And I think these spiritual states are not different. I think they're just very, very emergent or highly evolved examples of the same thing. Now, non-duality and a lot of spirituality is fundamentally very old. And it has a very, very old psychology. It doesn't, it has not, it's not very sophisticated. So it has this idea that you're somehow exp experiencing something directly. I think that's wrong. Which is why if you, what gen, not for everyone, but generally what leads to a non-dual experience is you read books, you listen to endless satsanga, and then having had these ideas in you, mm -hmm. the ex an experience will happen in line with those ideas. Now, it doesn't mean the experience is, is an illusion. I think these experiences are really important, but they're not free from interpretation. They've, 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 they've come with an interpretation built into them. And the same thing happens in a fundamentalist church. But a different experience, mm -hmm. different set of ideas. There, you're told Jesus is your saviour, you don't feel that, you don't believe it, but you read the book, you listen to enough people say it, and then one day, you come and you're born again, and Jesus is your saviour, and yeah. you, you know that's true. So I think that's one of the things which is going on. So it's a sort of imitation then? No, like, no, no, but no. more than that? It's, no. it's actually genuine experience? The, but... this is, I think this is how we learn anything. And we learn to have an experience like that. And they're hard to have because we're not familiar with them. And when you have them, they make a huge impression. And they're important. Uh -huh. The mistake, whether you're the fundamentalist Christian who then goes, but I know mm -hmm. that Jesus is my saviour. You don't understand. Or whether you're the non-dualist going, but I know I don't exist. You don't understand. Mm -hmm. you, it's the same mistake. And the mistake is to not see that, the, that there is ideation involved, which doesn't mean that your interpretation is wrong. It just means that your interpretation is an interpretation. So that's the fundamental shift that's happened for me in terms of how I understand non-duality now or how I understand all spiritual experiences to maybe 10 years ago. But what if there's... Does it make a difference if there is absolutely no thought? No, I mean... no. So one of the things you need to be able to separate if we're going to have a sophisticated psychology, mm -hmm. is the difference between what I call ideation and what I would call thought. Uh -huh. So the thing about the word thinking is uh -huh. we use it in different ways. I prefer to go, look, thinking, what is it? It's imagining talking to yourself. Yeah. That's what you're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's neither here nor there. You can either imagine talking to yourself or not. It serves a purpose. Uh -huh. It can be very beneficial. If you talk to yourself, like now, we're, we're talking to each other, hopefully it's beneficial. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If we were to be horrible to each other, or just talk rubbish, or just create repetitive anxiety, it wouldn't be useful. Uh -huh. Talking to yourself is the same. 
ideating is not even usually conscious. Ideation is the, the categories that you're using in order to discern what you're experiencing, whether it's in the world or spiritual states. So this is a different thing. So you can not be thinking at any time, or but you will still be ideating. That makes that makes sense because it seems to me that we don't really need thought, and and during long periods of no thought, I mean, I think thoughts nothing. are really important. I mean, yeah, they're great. I mean, I I enjoy because I get mind states and no mind states, so yeah. I get both, and yeah. I enjoy both equally. Fantastic, but. Initially, I just got no mind, right. and I realised people didn't understand that you don't need thinking to know what everything is and how to do everything. Oh, you don't need thinking to do that. Yeah, well, you need be... thinking to reflect on what you're doing. That's what you need thinking for, or to imagine what you could do. Now, you don't necessarily need to do that because it will happen unconsciously. Yeah, I think. But if you that. if you if you do it consciously, you will do it better, which is why we evolve thinking. You don't want to be thinking all the time, though. Here's, here's a big shift for me. Is this okay? I'm, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so, so here's a big shift for me, which is uh, about understanding the nature of consciousness. Right. So in certain forms of non-duality, most of them, you've got the idea of there's a thing called consciousness. Mm -hmm. It's a kind of presence in yeah. which everything exists. And I, you, you'll find that in most of my books. Yeah, yeah. And I think that's completely wrong. And, and it's a very strange idea, which is why when, you know, I don't think anyone that I've ever met has just come across that idea. Or I've never met a kid who's gone, I think I might be consciousness. It's like, it's a weird idea. <laughs> you have to learn it. Yeah, and yeah. when you but first learn it, you think, that doesn't make any sense. But if you hear it enough times, yeah. you kind of get it. So what you're doing is you're learning how to ideate in this way that you are consciousness. Yeah. And the key moment for me was when I realised that the argument or the, the, the pointing out exercises that I've been using, mm -hmm. were, which I thought was pointing to the obvious. Yeah, I point, the, everything exists in consciousness, just look. Sensations exist in consciousness, don't mm -hmm. they? Thoughts exist, everything is in consciousness, it's, it's indisputable, right? Right. Was realising that was nonsense. That what I'd done was I was ideating in a certain way. I created this, when I said everything exists in consciousness to somebody, mm -hmm. I'd already told them there's a thing called consciousness, is there? And things exist within it, do they? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And because that might be true, but it might not be. There's other ways of seeing it, and, and for me, the other ways of seeing it have turned out to be better. Okay, because that, that aspect confused me when I right. had the shift. It was like, I don't get that. But also people talking, speakers talking that way, they seem to have dropped it. Not like across the board, it seems to be passe. Like maybe... <laughs> like, oh, oh, really? Has, has yeah, that I, I think I it's... I had no idea. <laughs> like so maybe you were ahead of the game. Oh, maybe. But it seems like, yeah, the style of non-duality shifts. Oh, it, it certainly evolves. I've yeah, seen yeah. that. So, so to go back to your thinking, so then you're like, well, if, if, if there's not this disembodied presence of consciousness... Mm -hmm. But rather, there's Tim, who's a psychobiological system who exists in relationship with everything mm -hmm. and has come from the universe. So you could say the universe has arisen as Tim and I'm in relationship with you and everything else. Mm -hmm. It looks to me that the best or the easiest or most obvious way to understand consciousness is consciousness is a way of processing information in high definition, if you will. So whatever you pay attention to you're conscious of. Yeah, that makes sense. Um, and I've heard people say that there is no unconscious as well. Um, no unconscious? Yeah. I'm not sure that's true. But I was thinking as well, uh, states like repression is a state where, you know, you say something never happened. Yeah. Like, yeah. But actually, when you become conscious of that which never happened, you realise I was always aware of it and on some level right you there's a big it, there's so a big gray area it, yeah yeah no right. it's, it's yeah. just you're it's right. just interesting you're that right. you're you right. see it but you don't yeah you don't clock it somehow yeah. like it's i think it's it really is like a focus it's like the example I, you know i always think if i say to you now be conscious of your left foot 
you can be, but you weren't before, most likely. Yeah, yeah. And it's like the minute I say it, bang, left foot. Yeah. And you, but that didn't mean that that you that let you weren't. If, if someone had stood on your foot, you'd been conscious of it. Yeah. Because you're taking it all in, but most of it you're processing in low definition, and then where you put that focus of attention, you process that in high definition, and I think that's what's happening in these states also. So. When you enter a no thinking thing, uh -huh. you're not paying any attention to imagining talking. Either you stop imagining talking, or if it is going on in the background, you're not paying any attention and it will just disappear from your radar. And instead, you're paying attention to something else. So whatever you pay attention to becomes vivid. Yeah. I was thinking during those no mind states, it's like your point of perception is widened as well. So yep. everything is taken in. Yeah. And there's no there's no barrier to it, so it's yeah. uh, and it also for me there's a feeling that goes with that, and it feels quite drunk for a bit word, want of a better word. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's, it's, it's yeah, it is drunk. It feels like love to me always. Yeah, it's my, just my this all embracing. This is benevolence. This this lovely. It's communion. It's it. So well, so there's a key word for me, because. The first thing that changed for me, Dawn, was a long time ago. So I was already a kind of non-dual heretic when I was first doing all the conferences. Right. Because everyone on the conferences was going, you don't exist, you don't exist. And my whole thing right from the start was, it's both. Yeah. It's both. There's a oneness arising as individuality. And the individual, the individual is not in the way. The individual is the foundation from which the universe, as you, recognises that it's all one. And therefore, it's 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 both of those at once. So it's yeah. a communion, not a union. The the, the 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 consciousness of oneness happens because there's an individual who's conscious, who's paying that attention. Mm -hmm. So the individual really is very important to me, and precious. It's just that the individual can actually wake up into this state of being more than they, you can realize. I'm not just this separate skin bag. Uh -huh. I'm actually the whole thing, and that's that. I, so I, that's why I had I, I've coined this word univigil, and I've done that to try and go look. A univigil is an individual who is experiencing this profound oneness, uh -huh. not somebody who's walking around going, "I don't really exist," which is vaguely ridiculous. <laughs> and and you know, I'm sh there's a a lot of people. <laughs> excuse me. That was. That was uh, we'll have to edit that little bit out. Um, I thought I'd done that big pun. <laughs> but funnily enough, just because, you know, a little bit of magic and synchronicity, that's my friend from, from Belfast. Oh, right, okay. <laughs> <laughs> who, who I haven't spoken to for ten years, probably. Oh, how bizarre. There you go. Yeah. We'll just wait for that to buzz and then I'll pick up so that you can have it edited out. Oh, okay. Or you can keep it in because it's entertaining. <laughs> but in real life. Yeah. Um, I was going to say, just... Uh, do you not find it interesting? Like, so some of the speakers will say that there is no experience, you know, and <laughs> of they're, what? like, well, they're talking of non-duality. So there's no, there's no, you know, there's no non, no non-dual experience. Yeah. There's no non-dual experience. Yeah. Nothing happens that, you know, basically there's nothing to t talk about. Like there's <laughs> nothing, there's no one. Okay. <laughs> like how <laughs> that, but, but the people desire that and, and, and seen from like, as a seeker, like, I was sort of thinking, well, you can actually desire, be programmed to kind of desire something that's so undesirable. Yes. Who wants no experience? Yes. Really? Yes. You know, well, why don't you sit in a box under, yeah. <laughs> under the stairs yeah. or something? I don't know. you, Or like, I don't know. Yeah. I think you're right. It is extraordinary. And I think it's because, well, every, everyone will be different. I think sometimes it's because people are in states of distress and mm -hmm. this offers a way out. My worry is that sometimes it is a way out for a bit, uh -huh. and then it leads to even deeper distress. I think it's much more healthy if you can go, look, the individual really matters. You are an evolving individual, that's what you are. But you can, through, you can, as an individual, come into these deep awake, what I would call deep awake states. And it's not like there's one you should get, have you had it yet? Mm -hmm. There's huge potential. The universe is evolving and will continue evolving, and you can tap into that. And some of that involves entering these states of oneness or non-duality. But you don't. So you don't see it as 
a known state, you, you know, once it's recognised, once non duality is seen, that's no, it. Like. The, the only way that you can see that um, is if you, you see enlightenment, or whatever you want to call it, as a negative. If it's the death of the individual, then if you can move your ideation around and somehow establish the idea you don't exist as an individual, which takes some doing, really. You know, it, it, the thing the thing with when people say they're not they're not an individual, they're not there's no whatever person there or whatever. The the question really to ask is what do you mean by that? Because clearly you're you're a body talking to me, uh -huh. so you don't mean that. Clearly you are having your own experience of the psyche, uh -huh. which is different to mine. So you don't mean that. So what's the thing you're denying? Because we might actually end up agreeing. It's because it's like what is actually being denied. Well, I suppose, well, in my case, there was an experience of, like, being inside this body, which I know you're going to say, depersonalization. Um, but, but being like, something, like, you were something different inside it, not you were the body, yeah, but you were a felt, thing inside it? Yeah, I felt like, like the it was... Psyche? Well, mostly in the head because I think I was a bit cut off, like from okay. the body. So the um, psyche, you mean the, the 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 thing which is thinking now, the thing that understands my yeah. funny noises, that thing. But that I mean, it seemed to be like almost sort of yeah, that that was the sense of self seemed to be yeah located there. Okay, where it doesn't seem to be like it's not like I'm not dawn or whatever, like but it doesn't seem to have that sense of location there anymore like it you know and it I don't know maybe I don't know if you see like I know you don't agree with the non-dual thing I don't you know some people who awaken to just emptiness does that resonate with you at all so so I would see what makes all of this one it's clearly all different mm -hmm. you know we're all different it's different everything's got different qualities what makes it one and I would say that the easiest way to understand everything is that it's all different types of information within one field. And I call that field being because it's the one quality that everything has is being. Mm -hmm. It's an old idea. Plato had it. The Zen masters call it isness. So there's a, there's a oneness of being, which is the primal quality mm -hmm. that everything shares. But in itself, it's nothing. Because it has no differentiation. Yeah. So if you, when I said, look, consciousness is paying attention, and what you pay attention to will become vivid. If you pay attention to it now, certainly if you pay attention to it in deep in meditation where you're withdrawing your senses, you can enter that. You you can bring into your attention that field of being, whatever name you give to it, and you will enter samadhi states, and it's empty, and it's interesting. Have you had samadhi states with your eyes open? Yeah. Okay. Is that a regular thing with you? Or? What, do you what do you mean by regular? <laughs> I don't know. Do you get them once a week, once a month? I don't know. I like. Uh, and it depends what you mean. I mean, to me, there's a whole fluctuation of things which open up wherever I put my attention. And I'm certainly not making any claims to specialness or that I can put my attention here and there. But, yeah. But, um, and also, for me, Dawn, it's a, it's a, it's a kind of an engagement. I'm not looking for those states. I'm looking. I'm Why not are you look not looking for those states? I mean, of course, uh, Somali states. Yeah, yeah. I don't. They're not as interesting as other states. Yeah, I know that's true. They're it's just not. Yeah, they're, it's they're emptiness. Not, yeah, I get, okay, got it. I, There's I a level of this which is emptiness. The idea that that's it. It's like no, that's that's the basement. Why yeah, would I want to spend the whole time in the basement? I'm interested in the most emergent aspects of the universe, and they're not empty. They're full, absolutely full of uh -huh. interesting qualities. So, yeah. so it's when you haven't had the experience, it's pretty shocking and interesting. It's shocking in a good way, usually, not always, but usually. But I, I don't personally. I, I'm not. It's not that interesting. I'm not as bothered by them. You know, they come and go. I think initially I was because they just seem to be there most of the time. If I wanted to sit down, right. be a samadhi state, right. and well, I could stay like this forever. But right. then actually. <laughs> Yeah, it just becomes kind of normal. Um, yeah. yeah, and there are more interesting things, because I know you talk about it as well, the soul. Um, you know, the near-death experience stuff and what happens after death, because I was, I guess I was sort of suckered by the non-dual speak of, 
there's there's a kind of thing that you feels like it's almost taboo to be interested in death like which I didn't realize I was being affected by that conditioning so it was like sort of yeah yeah not interested and then bang I started having other experiences other dimensions and then re more recently it's been experiences where I I know I'm dead I mean just speaking from that experience I and mean, there was no doubt I was dead and kind of wondering what how did I die did I have a heart attack in the night that sort of thing uh, so that's collapsed my idea of death really as being a reality of yeah of course a physical ghost but obviously yeah like you say I didn't you made it okay for me to say soul because I always steered away from that word because right. of the non-dual conditioning yeah it's yeah. a taboo word you're not allowed to say that but yes, of course yeah. it's synonymous with psyche. I never thought of that. Of course, it's it's yeah. just personality, really. And yeah, it's it's the experience we're having right now, and it looks like it continues after the death of the body, and that seems to be what a huge number of people have experienced, and it makes sense to me. And if you explore that, if you explore shamanic states, if you explore deep meditation or you have the experiences you're talking about it starts to make sense and mm -hmm. you think okay and then so when you look at the Tibetan Book of the Dead or something like that you go okay I see why they they I see what they're saying here so not only does the individual exist now mm -hmm. the individual soul but I think the individual soul is what is evolving the question is is the individual soul still under the apprehension that it's a separate individual only or, do, or has it realised, oh, hang on, the way I get it is, look, I, there's never been a moment mm -hmm. where there's only Tim. There's always Tim in the universe. Always. Uh-huh, okay. We come together. Mm-hmm. We don't, we're not, always we come together. There's always been dawn in the universe. Yeah. So maybe we're intrinsically linked. And, and so the, I, the way it looks to me is that there's one field of being which has evolved into everything, mm -hmm. and it's evolving as we speak right now, and it's evolved into Dawn, and there you are, and it's evolved into Tim, and I can look at you, and I can go, oh, look, there's somebody, there's a human being like me, they've got a biological body right now, and then I can't see it, but what I'm connecting with is a psyche or a soul, mm -hmm. that's there. But there's one field of being, so your essential being, and my being, is the same being. And when I get that, the relationship when I connect with you is different than if I'm just like, oh, I'm over here and you're over here. And that's the shift, I think, that's really most important. But you think, okay, the sort of, um, I was, I was also <laughs> one thing because I, I, I think I mentioned you before that about, like having had various experience, hell experiences, just of, you know, in my other dimension kind of experience. I've, I've had an experience of heaven. I've had experience of other realms, and you said you know psychological issues um but I was only getting those experiences after I kind of went sane and I do wonder about them like can like if this is evolving the soul's evolving I mean you said you know there's been millions of years of dinosaurs like why would a god make something so stupid kind of thing <laughs> but what about like those hell states as well? I mean, aren't you not take them? No, I, I think most of us experience them in, now, let alone after death. I th so, so if everything has evolved, mm -hmm. and that's the way it looks to me, like, you know, all I've ever experienced is this process, uh -huh. one way or another, even when it's timeless, even when my, even when my attention goes to the emptiness, uh -huh. when I come back, I've been in the emptiness for 20 minutes. You know, it's it's this flow of evolution of which I'm a part and everything's a part and it looks like it's been going on for something like 14 billion years and it's gone from the simplest things you can imagine to psyche. Uh -huh. And in that process, we're living with all of the past. So basic matter hasn't gone anywhere. It's still there. It's like, you know, it's still here. Yeah. Uh, basically, you know, plants haven't disappeared. They're still there. And then there's us and then there's psyche. And the psyche... It contains within it the past. And a lot of it's not, you know, history's not somewhere you'd want to live. It's, it's an, it's a, it's, there's a lot of ugliness in history. There's a lot of ugliness in the world now, but even more in history. So you're dealing with all of that, those hellish states. But the hellish, I mean, from all the ND research, I, there's no, nothing that predicts 
why certain people have the negative experiences. I mean, psychological, not even psychologically mm -hmm. or... Well, the first thing is they only have them at that particular juncture. Yeah, true. And, and it's a bit like, you know, if we went to sleep tonight uh -huh. and we said, okay, you can have a nightmare or you can have a good dream tonight. It's like hard to say, isn't it? Probably. <laughs> I don't get that many nightmares. No, I don't. But you might. Yeah. You know, or you have an, you're going to have an anxiety dream or you're going to yeah. have a real wish-fulfilling fantasy. So it's like the, 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 the psyche and if... And the interaction between other psyches and other psyches in the kind of ecology or the ecosystem of psyches, uh -huh. I think it's very complicated. I suspect it's just as complicated as bio biological ecosystems are. So I think we're just scraping the surface of being able to know what the hell's going on. Yeah, and no, I, I get that. And it does seem like the more conscious you are in those states, the more control you do seem to have yeah. over them. And... I have sung to Jesus <laughs> and, and yeah. gotten out of, you know, bad situations with demons. Like, yeah. Because I've seen that's what people do in NDs when they're talking about it. Like if they imagine light, if they pray. Yeah. Well, in the, if you go, I mean, I mentioned the, um, the Liberation Through Hearing, the Tibetan Book of the Dead. Mm -hmm. And in that tradition, which I think is quite interesting, you, you get the way that I would interpret that is that they're seeing... Uh, it, in our modern language, the demons and the the, 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 the you realise that you, they're, you're inventing all of them, uh -huh. and they're kind of projections, what you called before repressions or traumas or things. So that, in other words, um, like in dreams, you're representing aspects of your own soul and and interacting with them. Yeah, no, I remember during one of my lucid dreams, I was thinking about how you talked about dreams being sort of a less conscious state. And I remember... <laughs> so, so, not, not always. No, I know, I know. I guess you... I, I remember you said that as well, but I remember thinking... I think it was my most lucid, lucid dream, and there was right. nothing happening. I was in a village, and I was just looking around, and I, I realised I felt the same. The trees looked as real. I went into the pub. I thought, let's see what the wine's like. I had a glass of wine. It's good. <laughs> Nice. And I thought, yeah, I'd love, have a child, I better tell somebody I'm dreaming. So I told this couple outside, I said, I know this sounds crazy. You know, can you take my number? Will you give me a text message? Because I'm going to wait. <laughs> but obviously they didn't text me, but I did wait. But it, I just realised, like, some <laughs> no, of them... No, that would have been funny. <laughs> no, that would have been really weird. But I, some of those lucid dreams, it seems... Like, I've, I've been getting quite a lot of them recently. Huh. Like, sometimes it's like the whole psyche... It seems to be much more of the psyche online, yeah. which if you're stuck in a hellish NDE, yeah. the more you've got access to that, because you might forget that there's such a thing of yeah. imagination, to imagine a way out. Yeah. You need that. It's like, Definitely. that's key. I think that's really wise. Mm -hmm. The thing I just want to point out is connect it back with the previous scenario, uh -huh. because given what, you, what you've said about the nature of the psyche or soul, given your experience there of walking around inside the imagination, going inside a public, the idea mm -hmm. that the individual is an illusion. It just seems preposterous. But I wasn't examining the awakened state in that lucid dream because I thought I'd never thought about but it. But who was? Well, I was. Yeah. Yeah. But I mean, I still had that sense of weightlessness I describe. And okay. I mean, you but, know, but what I'm trying to get at is that there there is an individual experiencing that. Yeah, 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 sure. And that seems absolutely unavoidably, okay. you know, true. Now, you know, I, I, I'm not saying that's the only way you can understand it, because I've been making the same mistake myself that I talk, pointed to earlier, but it does feel like the most coherent observation mm -hmm. is that you experience that. I didn't tell you about my dream, and I experienced that. Yeah. So that the thing which is doing the experiencing is an individual arising within this oneness. But it's still experienced differently than, say, a dream where you're in the dream and you're just really falling for the story. Okay, so yeah. obviously a lucid dream, you know that it's a dream and you can yeah. play it. Sometimes you hit walls, and sometimes yeah. you don't. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think there's a method. I know people have invented methods. Yeah. And, but I was, because people said to me, you know, you don't, you're not awake in dreams. But it is the same sense of wakefulness. When, in that. Well, you're, it's, still, you're you know, still the same psyche. Yeah, I, I guess so, but I'd never thought about it before. You know, it just answered a question for me. 
like so you're you're gonna... just you're just in different states. Yeah, I guess the psyche can come into all these different states, and it can pay attention to all sorts of different things. And whenever it does, it will shift, and the experience will shift with it. But it doesn't seem like. You know, like at one point I thought, well, these lucid dreams are becoming more lucid, but of course it's it doesn't continue going more more lucid. Then you just get a fucking dream where you're being chased by an elephant and whatever the hell, and you you think it's real. You know, it just disappointingly there doesn't seem to be real progress in, you know, well, for me in those kind of other experiences right I've, I've never I've, I've never I, I did when I was much much younger I focused on them but I haven't okay. done them for a long time okay fair enough they're, they're not as interesting as sort of the thing the, the thing which I find the most interesting Dawn mm. is this okay I find this absolutely compelling that every day I'll wake up and this is here this incredible experience of being a person of being in, in, in the world on this journey towards death uh, facing the challenges that I face with the individuals I know, all of that just seems so extraordinary to me. Just well, it's not extraordinary; it's ordinary. But in that, it is also compelling and and, and but, mysterious. Has it always been like that to you? Yeah, pretty much. So there's been, you've had this natural curiosity that's just yeah. Well, that's pretty rare because I know you say, you know, why why don't people question this? Yeah. I mean, I. I I never thought there was a way of questioning it. Like, yeah. even though, and it's a funny thing you, you can read about non-duality or spiritual books, hmm. and try to understand it with the mind, and still think there's nothing interesting in this. And then curiosity. I mean, I think what happens. Uh, this is my guess. Uh, at the moment, is like I said, we, we're 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 psychobiological organisms. We interpret. We 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 ideate. We, we sense and make sense, and, we, and so we're ideating the world, and we're taught how to do that by our culture very early on. We need to be, of course we do, otherwise we wouldn't, have, wouldn't learn anything. And we are therefore constantly interpreting what the world is, and we don't know we're doing that. It's just happening. Mm -hmm. We haven't done any, we haven't put it in there consciously, we're not even doing it consciously, we're just doing it. So that there's a, a, a higher level of, of processing which comes through reflection, especially deep reflection. Whereby It's like, like most people get reflection to a limited degree where they can go, oh, shall I do this or shall I do that? That's, a, that's reflection. Uh -huh. yeah? And if you're doing it consciously, you can do it well. If it's important, if it's not important, you just do it, don't you? It yeah, just happens yeah. in the background. But if it's important, you stop and you go, I'm going to think about this. Should I do this? Should I do this? And you choose what you hope is the best one. That's reflection. Mm -hmm. There's another level where you step outside of your of your whole ideational network and you go, am I thinking about this in the right way? Is there another way to think about that? Mm -hmm. And for some reason I had that very young. So I had that sense of mystery. So what it wasn't just the way I'd been told it was. It was also like, is that right? What is this? And some people don't get, read, get, get that readily. And then what intrigues me... Well, I mean, a lot of people in non-duality... Mm -hmm who will send me messages explaining how wrong I am. <laughs> and it's sweet, because they're long messages. It must have taken a long time to write. Mm -hmm. And they're telling me things which could, they could have been quotes from my books. Right, okay. Because they obviously have no idea who I am. But they've just heard what I've got to say and they don't like it. And what often I see, and this is not just non-duality, it's people. Uh -huh. You can find it in politics, you find it in religion, everywhere. They're in an ideational network, they just don't know it. So everything is like, it's this way. Yeah, and yeah. they haven't got that sense of, it might be this way. This is the best way I've found so far. Which enables them to reflect on this deeper level. And that's why I'm always trying to go, just, just try, well, see what happens if you step out of that and you can reflect. Because if you do, you might suddenly go, oh, that assumption that I'm consciousness, is that right? Or whatever it is. But I think, I think it takes, well, maybe not in your case, but it takes an awful lot of courage to think for yourself of, that's possible at all. I mean, it, it, it seems a lot of the non-dual speak is imitated, almost word for word. Oh, it is. I mean, it's, <laughs> it's, it's like, when you see it, it's hysterical. But it's but that's seen as a whole mark of, like, honesty or truth or something. I, I mean, through the seeker mind, it seems to be. Um, it, it, people just copy each other. It's what they do. And non-duality is just the same. 
is people copy each other. And they, the, and you can see that there's been someone who's probably set it up, and then there's tribute acts, and they just, they're just repeating it. Um, and they're sincere. I mean, I'm not trying to put people down. They're sincere. It's just that that's of no interest to in me. That's the truth. It's like I'm not remotely interested in that because it's not going anywhere. You, I'm interested in people who are genuinely looking and questioning things, not just for the sake of it, though, because if you, I, if you, if you question the way you ideate and then you change how you ideate, mm -hmm. your experience changes. Yeah, okay. Yeah, that makes sense. So, for instance, if you talked to me 20 years ago, mm -hmm. I'd have gone, Dawn, I'm the presence of... I can do it now, actually, I can get into this state. Because it's, <laughs> it's just ideate it and you're in it. Yeah. I'm the presence of consciousness within which everything is arising like a dream mm -hmm. right now. Okay, so there's that state, okay? Right. Now I'm going to do the same thing with a different way of ideating it. Okay? Okay. Come with me if you can. Now I'm going to go, there is a oneness of being mm -hmm. which is arising as everything, including me and you. Now, the difference in the experience, it's the same basically, isn't it? What's the difference? Yeah, yeah, yeah. The difference in the difference in the way of ideating it is that when I was the presence of consciousness, for me, I was this thing outside. Yeah. Now, I'm embedded in it. It's the oneness of being, and Tim is completely embedded in this oneness of being, meeting you. So it's a different type, it's a, it's a way of experiencing basically the same thing. Yeah, I get that. But it's different and better. I like it a lot better. Well, yeah, I, maybe that's why... I, I so it doesn't just, what I'm trying to say is, it's not just that it makes more intellectual sense, although it does. Yeah. It changes it experientially as well. Uh, yeah, of course, yeah, that makes sense. It does... Yeah, what was I going to say? And, and, and we're like with the individual, it's like, you know, if I'm here going, yeah, we don't really exist, Dawn, and, and you know, it's, life is of no significance, really, and you're not making any choices, actually. It's like what I am saying to you and the way I'm relating to you is negating everything about you that makes you of value. But oh, if yeah. I, but I if know. I say to you, Dawn, you are the oneness of being that's been a 14 billion years evolving to this and that you're the leading edge of that process, we both are, mm -hmm. right in this moment. And the leading edge of it, as far as we know, is this experience, this disembodied experience of psyche or soul that we're having. And there's no other soul like yours. And I'm meeting it right now. It's like, wow, that's a completely different thing, isn't it? It's yeah, like, no, I get that. And, and especially if you then go, and your choices are the most powerful thing you've got, where you put your attention. Yeah. It's suddenly everything's turned inside out. So what do you think then, because there's a lot of talk about the story. <laughs> the story. Isn't it great? Not, isn't it a great story? Why would you, you know, it's like, do you think? isn't it great? What do you think of your personal history? Is it meaningful? Yeah. yeah. Uh, everyone's is. I love hearing people's stories, don't you? I mean, it's amazing. Yeah, I do. It's interesting. Yeah. I love, I love stories. We're obsessed by stories. I watch stories on the TV most nights with my wife when we're relaxing. Stories. Yeah. Fantastic. Do you kind of, I mean, has anything changed with memory? Do you treasure your memories? Do you, I mean, I love exploring the past. I find it interesting because there's so many insights in that. that yeah, are absolutely. Relevant now and... I, I, well, I, in, you know, I'm 64. And in the last four years since I've been 60, my relationship with my past has been amazing because I've just seen it so differently. It's been a little bit humbling, really. Uh -huh. To be honest, because right. <laughs> a lot of things don't look as good as they did at the time, and, and my sense of myself, but it's kind of funny. Yeah. But it's also like, oh, I, I seem very naive. I seem very, a bit full of myself in various times. A bit, you know, I'm, I'm more like, oh, right, okay. I, the biggest thing is that now when I look back, I see, oh, I was a person of my time. I thought I was just me. Oh, right, but actually, okay. I was embedded in what was happening collectively. Yeah, okay. And moving in directions where the current was heading in that direction, because me and all my friends were heading in that direction, or whatever it was. Like being influenced by Indian philosophy when it came over, and oh, right, whatever okay. it was. You can just I could so I so so my relationship with my past is changing a lot. Did you did you find any point at which I don't know if you ever struggled with your past? Was there ever a kind of like a point at which you became much more compassionate. It sounds like you are about your past. And I've been, I've, I've been very fortunate. I've had a pretty lucky life. 
Okay. Um, compared to the struggles that a lot of people have. I mean, I've had bad things. You know, I have, but I've been pretty lucky. And and so I do give myself a hard time, but not inordinately. And I've got kinder to Tim over okay. the years. I'm much more tolerant of him. Right, okay. Than, than I used to be. But I'm also much more tolerant of everyone else as well. My level of tolerance has increased as I've realised. I think it's just that I've realised how hard it is. That life's really hard. Yeah, it really is. <laughs> it's really, really, it's is, really yes. hard. Which is <laughs> partly why we need each other. You know, it's like, it's hard. And, and so the more support we can give each other. And, you know, people are so courageous in facing it and going through the process. And, and that's why it's so lovely when we can hit those states of communion. That's like when I run my retreats. Mm -hmm. What I love is because people can step out of all of that mm -hmm. for a weekend. And I know that by the second day, they will be in love with life, nearly everyone. And it's so, ref it's so like, oh, thank God for that. I remember. I remember that there's this as well, that you can step into a place where it's really beautiful, where it's full of love, where you're deeply communing with everyone. And there's a huge vulnerability and a softness and, a, and a hum humility. And it may, be, it may be that the person can't stay in that for that long. Yeah, Because sure. life is hard. But we need to keep returning to it, just yeah, to remember it's there. And just go, oh yeah, okay, I remember. And then you, you feel strong enough to take the next thing on. Can I skip on to, like, I was just yeah. curious about, because, you know, you, you speak about gods. Yeah. You know, and sort of as the communion of souls. Yeah. Like, can you say a bit more about that? Because I'm fascinated by that. Yeah, idea. well, I think what, uh, you see, uh, my experience since I was young uh -huh. has been that when I've entered these deep white states, the best description of them has always been, I'm touching something bigger than me. Mm -hmm. And when I was young, what ideas did I have? Well, I, the only ideas I had, I was 12 when it first happened, and I had, I had ideas from church. So my interpretation was, oh, this is God. Uh -huh. And I'd learned that God is love, and there was this enormous love, and oh, this is God. And then that kind of left, especially when I got into more non-dual and Eastern philosophies, because there wasn't room for that. Right. And so that went. And then it came back about, I don't know, 15, 20 years ago. 15 maybe um, but now the way I see it is that it's not that there's a God outside of creation or a creator or even a God at the beginning that explores itself as life or any of that I think there's another level on from us so this process of evolution we pretty much looks like it's led to psyche mm -hmm. soul and I think what's happening is when we enter these states of communion especially when souls enter communion with each other something greater forms. And the analogy is that you can see the same process happening through everything. So you can see chemicals come together to form something greater. You can see that this body has got, I don't know, 50 trillion cells, is it? I don't know, there's a lot of cells. Yeah. <laughs> but it started as individual cells, and now they're all forming one thing, and it's something bigger than them. Mm -hmm. And my sense is that's what we're doing, that the next stage on from us is a... A, a communion of set of souls like this is a communion of cells but that's somehow increasing the consciousness all over like when you sort of is that got to do with after death like the soul i think when, i think people in, i think people and... enter it more so i think you can do it now for sure well my sense is that actually it's happening whenever we enter a deep, a deep communion and one of the things which has been intriguing me just recently uh -huh. is to is to really stop seeing spiritual these spiritual states as different or distinct, uh -huh. but really a more emergent level. So I think we enter these states of deep soul communion when we fall in love. Mm -hmm. You know, when you when that thing when you're a teenager and the first time you go, oh my god, and you're staring in his or her eyes and there's one of you or you feel like you dissolve yeah, yeah, yeah. and it's like that's the best thing I've ever experienced I just want to experience that forever and, yeah. and, and that or with an activity or with nature or with you know a child when oh my god you know and, yeah, yeah, sure. and you're entering those states whenever that happens God is forming or this uni soul is forming this, this soul which unites souls is forming through that state of communion 
which also means that when you go into those states, you're, you're touching it, and it feels really good. There's this immense benevolence and, 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 and love, because it's, it is holding everything within itself. Uh, but it's not, so it's not, it's not that, so that God is emerging from the universe mm -hmm. more than the, not the universe is arising from God. Yeah, no, I, I, I see that. I was, because some of, some of those like states of like, say experience of heaven or ND like stuff, it seems like, you know, you know, like, so waking up, perception is enhanced, you know, and I heard someone say, well, it's, how can there be oneness if, I don't know your thoughts. In some of those states, it seems like you can know everyone's thoughts, mm -hmm. and I've experienced that. Mm -hmm. And it's not cognitive, but it's, mm -hmm. I mean, it never is. It's almost like the more you touch upon death or let go or something like that, the more it's actually quite powerful. Like, the more the oneness is apparent in, in, in a kind of yep. more real way, and the wisdom whatever that is out there, like, you know, like the way in NDEs people, some people come back and they say they had to let go of some insights because it was just, you're not allowed to take them back with you, but it makes sense in a way that the more dead you are or let go you are, that that stuff comes through. And I have experienced that, that I suppose the numinous or whatever way you put it, I suppose, illuminations or whatever. I did experience that before awakening a couple of times. It, it is interesting, isn't it? Like, and what is that? Like, seeing is knowing and, you know, because this is all lost in the non -dual. Nobody talks about that. Like, but it's aspects of awakening. When I was sitting in the tube train on the day where my kind of shift happened and I was sat and suddenly I saw that everybody was a Buddha and then I saw everybody had a veil. Like, I could see the veil. Like, but it was all kind of, I knew what that meant in that moment. And, uh, you know, and other stuff, but it's just that kind of like you know, nobody wants to talk about it. But the magic of that, yeah. like, and one one of the things which you know, from everyday experience, I can see that it would be easy for someone to think the psyche or the soul is basically just imagining talking to yourself. That's all it is. Uh -huh. But it doesn't take a moment to go, hang on, but when you dream, you create whole worlds and you're engulfed in them. So it's a lot more than that. If then you go into different forms of meditation practice, which are about exploring the psyche, not the nothing or not God even, but the psyche, mm -hmm. shamanic practices, um, not just though the magical tradition in the, UK, in the West has got it, Jungian psychology has got it. It's a whole universe out there of the psyche as well. So psychedelics, you know, it's like there's a lot to explore. Yeah. So suddenly you realise, oh, this is a whole domain of reality. And right now, my attention is so much here, that's not very vivid. Yeah. It's like if I imagine now another world, it's all a, you know, it's just a room even. It's, it's kind of there. Uh -huh. But if I lose all consciousness of the senses mm -hmm. when, I, when my body goes to sleep, it's really vivid, like it's real. Yeah. And the se that's, I think, what's happening with death. It's like once the, you're not paying any attention to this because that's out of the question, this becomes really, really vivid and you enter a different, um, a more emergent level of reality, really. Yeah. And that's, that seems pretty significant. I want to say one other thing about God. Can I say one more thing? Yeah, go on. <laughs> because this ties back to earlier on. Again, this is like just a kind of speculation. It's just a way of thinking about things. But one thing I love about that comparison of going look is it possible that in the same way through the evolutionary process what started as individual cells mm -hmm. got together to form something as complex as me or you biologically is it possible that that same pattern is happening with souls coming together to form a greater being which traditionally has been called god although it's probably a bad word for it but let's call it that okay is that possible and if so, what strikes me about it is this. The reason this works is because all the cells are doing something different. If all the cells were the same, I'd be just like a slime mold. I'd be just yeah, a big yeah. pile of cells. Yeah. 
This is a multicellular organism because of the individuality of the cells and their function. Mm -hmm. That's what I think is happening with the individual and this unisol. Okay. It's the fact that you're not the same as me that makes it possible for this greater thing to exist. So your individuality and the evolution of your individuality, which will continue after the death of the body, mm -hmm. is absolutely essential to this next thing which is opening up. It's not in the way. It's certainly not to be dissolved. It's the whole point. Is that you, is that you what you bring to it is your individuality. Before I don't like that. <laughs> I was thinking it's another just the hell of it. Another taboo, you know, prayer. <laughs> That's a real taboo. Because I talk about that sometimes. It's like, well, who do you pray to? You know, one that's like, pray to God. You know, I I pray to lots of people. Like, um. You know, and I would, would imagine it, you know, like, do, is it something, I've noticed a power with prayer, and I know it's associated with altered states, yeah. heartfelt prayer. Um, I think anything which brings you into communion with that which is greater than us, whether you call it God, I call it the uni soul, I call it different names, because it's a unity formed, a greater soul, the greater being, that's what it looks to me. Uh -huh. I, there is nothing better than coming in, making that conscious, being in that, communing in that, just having a relationship with it, let alone communing with it. And if prayer helps you do that, great. So it's not something you do? Yeah, yeah. Oh, I do? mean, well, it's not, I don't, you know, I don't do it every day. No. Or, you know, <laughs> but, you but, but, I, but yep. you know, but, I mean, it's, my sense with, depends what you mean by prayer, by putting my attention on it, by having, you know, I have a personal relationship with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I don't yeah. have a personal relationship because it's a person. Yeah, I, I have get a personal that. relationship because I'm a person. Yeah, no, I get that. I, yeah? I get that. It's like, more than that, but I can have a personal relationship with it. Yeah, because I don't. I, I, I couldn't pray to an abstract. Yeah. I, I could pray to the bearded guy, even though he doesn't exist. Right. <laughs> and right. I can, you know, yeah. and I'll, I'll put some other people, you know, people who've passed on as well, yeah. you know. And I, I just noticed, I mean, because there, there was a time recently where I actually prayed. Like things were really bad, and I just prayed, please, could I just? I'm ready to go. I just, I don't want to wake up. And I had an yeah. experience of being dead. Like, right. but beings came to get me through the wall, which was interesting, and it was beautiful. Like I, I knew I was going on somewhere really nice, and I you know, spent time with these beings. I knew everything about me. Talking, I was thinking, oh God, well, I've lived at this age, it's not that old, but it was good, and kind of. <laughs> Sorry. But yeah, and it, I have noticed it just more recently in a certain state. But it's yeah, like I say, taboo. But it's interesting that people have NDC. I place. had a I had a, a particularly strong strong experience of God. It must be two years ago now. One and a half years. And it was a you know those moments where it, it takes a jump and you have an experience more than. And that was interesting because what left me after what le what I had afterwards, uh -huh. and I get it now, is that in terms of petitionary prayer, which is what a lot we're you know we we fall into, it's like oh please this or do this, or, it's like appealing for some. Was I had such a strong sense that that this presence, this this greater intelligence, was always doing everything it possibly could. You're right. Already. It was like, there's no point going help. It's like, it's helping. <laughs> right, okay. it, it's like something that was just totally there. And in that way, that old traditional, somewhat silly image of a, of a parent, I saw it in a different way. Because, you know, I'm a parent and I know that I would do anything for my daughter. But I can't do everything. I just can't. I'm yeah, running yeah, me. Sure. And my image of God is that God's not running the show. God is arising from the show. Yeah, and okay. there's some things this power can do, and there's some things it can't. Mm -hmm. But it's right there with you. Just like I'm there with my daughter going, even when I can't help, I'm there with you. Yeah, and it's like, like, it's right there with me. And yeah. it will, and, and somehow everything that happens, even the bad things, it will find a way to redeem them. It will find a way to take them to the good if I stay with them. That's what it can, that's what it can do. It can lead the, the, the story towards the good. Yeah, okay. Did you, did you experience also, I mean, because manifestation is a, a sort of dubious word, but there is, I do experience in certain states, like, very, like when I want something and I really imagine it, 
does seem to manifest. Mm -hmm. Like, not all the time, obviously, but... So that's, to me, that's what's interesting. So, it's one of the things I write, I write about in Soul Story, I've written about it in a few books. Soul Story is my last book. And where I thought, well, I take that seriously, but the thing which is interesting about it is the last bit. Sometimes. Yeah, okay. Well, that's so, it. but why? Why only sometimes? Because a lot of the crazy stuff to me, the yeah. new agey crazy stuff, mm -hmm. is like, well, you're creating your whole reality. It's like, yeah. mm. or you just do this magic formula and you can get your big car and you're, mm. that's not my experience. Yeah. My experience is sometimes it works spectacularly and you go, wow, who would have thought? I mean, mm. and I've had experiences which really were spectacular, but not that many. Yeah. And not all the time. And so my sense is, that we, that we need to understand that. A bit like synchronicity. Mm -hmm. you know, these are real. But yeah. why? How are they real? So what I'm interested in is developing a way of understanding this. And my guess is that the psyche, this thing we're here, we're experiencing, it's all about story. It's all about narrative. It's all about meaning. That's what it is. And that rather than just being this kind of little bubble like people in the culture tend to think it is, not doing anything, just it, thinking. Uh -huh. It's actually a whole domain of story. Dreams, all the after-death experiences, and that that domain of narrative mm -hmm. is affecting all the other dimensions. So that the, rather than the idea you get in, in reductionist science, where it's all being run from the bottom up, yeah. actually it's all, all the levels of emergence that have happened in evolution are all affecting each other. Right, okay. L l like, like now, I'm going to intend... With my psyche, mm -hmm. I'm going to intend this hand to lift. Are you ready? I know. It's, there you go. I just, I just did it. Look, look, look. I'm doing that. That's me. And the, 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 <laughs> yeah, that, yeah. The, that whole level of psyche mm -hmm. is interacting and actually creating synchronicities, manifestations, as you call them, and that magic of life. Yeah, because, it, yeah, I don't buy into the, you can make, you know, the new age stuff like you say. But it's not so easy to dismiss. So no. Like, you, you could and, no. you know, just say, well, statistically, you know, sometimes I mean, I, it's going to happen, sometimes it's not. Yeah, like, but the level of it just blow you away. Yeah, you? no, I, I guess There's something's that. going on. And, and even, you know, you say the movement, I mean, it's not even, do you even call it an intention? I mean, it's so subtle that, yeah. like, it is But, bizarre, but what's so interesting about it to me is I'm doing it through narrative, if you, if you will. Because how do I move that? I go, I'm going... I don't know how I do it, but I'm certainly I've, I'm not pulling any muscles. No. I don't. Or I just go. I want my hand to move. You don't even. But you. I don't even do that. No. You have my unconscious. But but if I you know if I if I if you said choose to move one of your hands and I did that one I've obviously chosen that one. Yeah. But I haven't pulled any muscle. It's all that's taken care of itself. It's almost like I've just gone. Yeah, they'd be good now if my hand moved and and so it's it's all narrative. It's all about the flow of what's happening, and then the biology takes care of itself. So I, I think I think that we should ask these questions, and I, that's why I say, look, look, you know, yeah, it's all nothing. It's like, yeah, oh, oh. You know, look how rich it is. Mm -hmm. Really, if you're not if you're not here going, wow, what is this? Then you know, great, go and look at nothing if that's what turns you on. And really, actually, you know, maybe 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 we need some people. In the individuals, mm -hmm. you know, maybe some individuals, they really should just focus on the nothing, and that would be fantastic. Mm -hmm. And then other individuals will focus on different things. The problem, the only problem I see is if those people who are focusing on the nothing mm -hmm. are going, no, everyone should focus on the nothing because that's the true state you should be in. It's like, no, that's just one option. And the other option is you can focus on all of these different levels that are happening. I think, I don't know, the causality one. Well, actually, you do say, you know, in a sense, spirit is doing everything. But because, it, I mean, it, but, you don't go around thinking that, do you? It's doing everything, but as you. I know. Okay, I get that. So it's subtly differently put. It's not put in a way that just makes you feel like it, this yeah, is it's, <laughs> just it, like it, it's, do, it's but But it's not, it's not, it's not like... Here's Dawn, mm -hmm. and then behind it, there's Spirit pulling the strings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's a field of being mm -hmm. that has become Dawn. And it's not separate. This is the field of being. It's just the field of being being Dawn. And Dawn, the field of being being Dawn, is making choices in a way that the cup can't make choices. The plant can't make choices. But on your level, 
you've developed the ability to reflect and make choices. But again, you, you look at some aspects of your experience. I mean, it's, uh, it doesn't, you know, you can see that obviously thoughts just, they do just arrive. You don't create a thought, right? I mean, again, so now who, when you say you don't create a thought... Well, maybe the unconscious creates a thought, so that's but, but, you in the bigger sense. But that's the key. So what people do all the time is they slip into associating themselves, the you, with the conscious, with the conscious bit. So if you're not conscious of it, it's not you. I wouldn't say that's right at all. I think you're a vast, vast psychobiological uh, system. Mm -hmm. It makes the choices. And the vast majority of them you're not conscious of. And that's a good thing. Because consciousness slows things down. Uh -huh. That's its point. So you only pay conscious attention to something when you want to process it in high definition. And if you do it with your, with your actual decision making, uh -huh. it will slow things down. Which is why if you need to react fast, you don't sit there and think about it. You just do it. Yeah, yeah. Or if you want to be a good sports person or a musician, you just do it. Yeah. But in order to be a good sports person or a musician, you have to spend long periods where you reflect on it, do it, do it again, think about what you did right, do it again, do it slightly differently. And all of that is consciousness. Okay. That's I, its role. I was thinking, oh, you know, like, so people who have MDEs and they get this life review. And what, what it, you know, so to experience your life through the eyes of everybody else, I mean, you can't think of anything more kind of like that would wake you up to your psychology and be life-changing in terms of evolution like psychological evolution people don't seem to very uh, i mean some people seem to be very unconscious for sure but like there doesn't seem to be m massive differences and, and what i've noticed between is, people well okay so there's there's people i've met who have never had any deep awake states did you put it like, I'm thinking a couple I know, maybe said this as well, like, who seems so psychologically evolved, so with a, you know, really high emotional intelligence, that is way beyond anyone I've met who's awake. And it, that, I mean, that's astonishes me too. Like, you sort of think, because I guess that's the projection of the seeker onto the one at the front of the room, like, that they must That happens happen. a lot. <laughs> that happens yeah, a lot. But, but it's got nothing. And yet, it does affect the psychology for some people. It certainly did here, because I was defended. Like, right. that went. Um, but it's just... You know, I, you kind of wish, in a way, it, you, you could depend on something like that, like it was an evolutionary leap of some sort. Yes, it, it is. It is an It is from your you know, perspective, but like, and it, it doesn't make, mean you're healthier to be around. No, no. I mean, I think that's a key. I think it's mm. a really deep insight, is to go that... It is an evolutionary uh, um, jump mm -hmm. in one area. Yeah, okay. It's not in every area. And because it's an evolutionary jump, it might spread out into other areas. Like you may go, oh, I'm, less, I, I'm, I'm willing to be less guarded now. or I'm, mm -hmm. you know, And it does, it can have beneficial effects. But just because somebody's very good at putting their attention on the nothing doesn't make them a nice person, necessarily, or doesn't make them evolved in these other areas. Um... Those are different areas. It doesn't make them good at maths either, or good at well, music. Well, apparently, MDEs make you. I mean, kids who have MDEs tend to be really good at math and music. <laughs> like, I mean, well, not, like, if you have a big experience, mm -hmm. you're going to be more able to take on other things, probably. But it's not guaranteed. It's it's it, it it's all individual, and and so once you get with with this idea of there being somewhere to reach, mm -hmm. it's a kind of zoop, done. Yeah. With an idea that everything, right from the start, has been evolving in every direction you can possibly imagine, mm -hmm. and is right now, and that where you're evolving, it's kind of got some similarities with where I'm, but it's also different. Yeah, yeah. And so you can just see that, oh, this person here, it's like, you know, I mean, I, I feel a lot with, you know, when I see various of the, 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 the teachers who seem like very benign people. Mm -hmm. Where I can go, they've, they've clearly had a big experience, they're able to help people. But they're not very good at thinking things through. So they, if they stopped and thought about what they said, it seems to me they'd soon realise it wasn't right. Uh -huh. But they're very good at this, and that's good and nice, and they're doing good things in the world. And not everyone's good at everything. You know, I'm rubbish at lots of things, for instance. You know, I'm lots. <laughs> and so, so what I'm, do you know what I'm trying to say? Like, and then you get yeah. this, we're all doing this, and we're all 
we've all evolved in different ways to different degrees. But that that love, you know, like because it does seem, you know, it does seem like there's an intimacy with life that there wasn't before. So yes. Experience here, which is really pleasant. Yeah. Um. And 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 yeah, this is supposed to be make makes you more empathic, more compassionate. I think it can make you more empathic if you did, didn't have empathy in the first place. Yeah. It's just odd that you can be awake or these states of wakefulness and and actually be quite brutal, like in your personal life. But that love is obviously there as well. But I, I'm assuming that I don't know that is there as well. I mean it. People are complex and we move in and out of states and we can, and most of us, most psyches to some degree are fractured, let's say, or different, have different elements within them. Mm -hmm. So I'm different with you than I would be with my daughter. I'm different with you than I would be with someone who just come in and insulted me or just like yeah, yeah. we're different. Mm -hmm. And so bringing those all together into one thing is quite that's what I think Carl Jung was on about with individuation. It's a tricky thing to do. So I think it's no surprise to me that there's people who can stand on a stage and be utterly beautiful and just think, wow, they're the best person in the world, and then meet them backstage and they're really unpleasant. Okay. And, you know, so my experience of enlightened people is they don't exist. Yeah, and yeah. That okay. they're, all, they're all like you and me, which is a mixed bag. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the, the problem is it's better if people own that and it doesn't stop them having amazing insights in the area they do and that's still valuable yeah of course. You know, if, if i think about you know a musician who had a big influence on me when i was younger van morrison right uh, exalted music would transport me really would put me into god mm -hmm. but i am told and this may be wrong that he is a really, he's a son of a bitch. <laughs> right, and, okay. and he's very moody and he's, you know, he can, mm -hmm. he can have his moments. But, but he's still the guy who wrote all that music. He, that, they just sit together. And I get that mm -hmm. because I know that, you know, I can have me moments too where you might yeah. come in and think, oh, Tim Freak, you should see him. He's like, well, you think he's like this. But it's like, well, that's what it is to be a human being. And so with a musician, say, we don't think that's unusual. We just go, yeah, well, what do you expect? Yeah. But with somebody who's a spiritual teacher, suddenly that's impossible because they've arrived. Yeah. And it's just not true. It's just, it's just, it's just a misunderstanding of what spirituality is. Because I, I think I didn't really get that because I, you know, with the love and everything, I, th I think when I had the experience, because I had an experience of another dimension when I, when I talked to Satan, but it started with, <laughs> <laughs> it's kind of the same. <laughs> you know, but it started with like it was a Christian kind of, of but it's like a ring of fire around me like and the fire at that same beautiful you know vitality aliveness it was terrifying but and, and it's, the thing that just hit me was the light can take any like it can be evil it's like, like it contains this love contains everything it seems somehow I don't know that's you know obviously Satan, you know, <laughs> but like, it just seems shocking because I'd just been to he heaven or experienced heaven and then hell came afterwards, but in a very old fashioned way. And I thought, wow, you know, you've been on quite some journeys, haven't you? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's changed, definitely changed. But at that it was those stuff that brought the curiosity back because yes. it seemed to stop. Yes, after the initial awakening, I wasn't curious about any of it really right. like yeah it's like my mind went to sleep and yeah. suddenly it's like wow what you know what is going on like and yeah. I haven't stopped being kind of fascinated I think that's why I got interested in, in what you were doing because it's like wow somebody's actually doing something a bit different or saying something different you know good for you <laughs> good for you and that's the way I think it's great to approach these states you know you had the the big non-dual experience, fantastic. You did that for a bit, brilliant. And then the next thing started up, and you went, "Oh, what's that?" Yeah. And that's that makes sense to me. I think that's that's the evolving soul. It's like that's good, interesting. Yeah. That'll make you a richer soul for all of that. Yeah, because I, I mean, as well, 
I suppose, yeah, it made me more interested in history and then the therapy as well. That's another thing that goes out, out of the way. Therapy, the thing in non-dual circles is therapy makes the prison more comfortable. <laughs> it's so patronising. <laughs> Who wants to go to therapy? Think, it's, you know, <laughs> it like, it just makes it seem pointless as well. Yeah. You know, and yeah. so people get stuck. It's very nihilistic. Yeah. It's bleak. It's it bleak. is bleak. It is bleak. And, 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 and the reason it's so popular in the modern world, I think, well, I used to talk at these um, non science and non-duality um, things, mm -hmm. where a lot, of the, a lot of the, initially, I was the odd man out because I was, wasn't into nothing, um, but all the teachers were, and I was the guy who didn't get it. And then slowly that's changed. I saw it change. But it, the two went together because there's something nihilistic about the modern scientific view uh -huh. which goes, look, ultimately, we're just clever monkeys on a planet. Yeah, yeah. Going nowhere, meaningless, nothing. You live here for two minutes and you're dead. And that's the way it is. And it's kind of a bleak, yeah, you probably haven't got free will. It's just it's just chemicals. And you, you think you've fallen in love, but it's just... <laughs> no, it's, it's just chemicals and biology and it's nothing. Yeah. So that's kind of very negative. And then the non-dual has this spiritual version of it. Where yeah, it's like, yeah, 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 you don't really exist and nothing really matters and all those personal stuff is all rubbish and, and really it's nothing. And, and so they kind of did that together for a while. Mm -hmm. And I hate both of them. I think with the, the... I mean, I love spirituality. I love yeah. science. It's just the philosophies, that are, those two philosophies with them just bleak and thin, thin but, uh, philosophies. And yeah. people are just stuck. I mean, that's the terrifying thing about it, is they're just stuck on that. And there's no way they can free themselves because you can't... I think anything set up as an ideal, you can't ask people to move on from that because they think that nothing makes sense unless they have that, and what? then afterwards things will make sense. And One of the most dangerous things, and... Which, which you do get obviously in some non-dual circles but it's very common very common in Indian spirituality uh -huh. from my experience of it is the demonization of the mind if you say the mind is a problem uh -huh. it's very hard to get out of what you of the cult you're in because the thing which will take you out of the cult oh. is your mind yeah yeah sure okay. that's where you'll go is that right but if that doing that, mm. not just I mean the West, I mean doubt in the Christian church is the same. Mm -hmm. That's the enemy. Doubt oh, is the yeah, enemy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Rather that's than what no to. doubt is the, your friend. Doubt can only make things better. Yeah. Because if you doubt and then you you go no I think I was right you you're now more conscious of what you believe, and if you're doubt and you find you're wrong you'll come to somewhere better. Have you have you gotten most of your insights on your own or through conversation? Both. Okay, because I was sort of thinking, there is something about the freedom, like the conversations I've had off screen, like, there'd be things that would never be said on camera, like, and it, it, you can really explore stuff, and there's only so much honesty, m maybe in your case a lot more honesty on camera, like, I don't know, but, because, you know, there's something at stake there, like, I don't know that we're capable of it with an audience, there's a kind of like... I don't know, where should we go? <laughs> How honest do you want to be? About what? <laughs> well, maybe it's just the pressure off, but, you know, like, conversations around this stuff. I mean, I think you grow so much. You do, because there's two souls. And, yeah. and, and some, you know, I mean, I'm, I'm a philosopher, which really means I spend an awful lot of time talking to myself. I sit in here, I go for walks, I talk to myself working around the way I ideate and how I can come to understand this in a new way because the thing which drives me is I think this awakening to oneness mm -hmm. spirituality generally is really important uh -huh. but I think it's in a real mess because it is not applying the level of scrutiny that says happened in physics or biology or all the rest. And so it's way behind. And I think our future evolution depends on it. So my attempt is to try and help, as best I can while I'm alive, to frame a different way of looking at the whole thing, physics, biology, everything, mm -hmm. which includes spirituality, 
as as one process, and I think I'm getting somewhere, and I'm I'm excited by it. You know, I I just want to start getting to the point where I can share it clearly enough that I can take it out and see what people think, because the current things like non duality feels like a dead end. Traditional religion feels like a dead end, but within it. There are some really, there's some amazingly important experiences. There's some deep insights that remain just as true. Uh-huh. We just need to think about them in a new way. Okay. So I'm talking to myself the whole time. That's what I do. If I get the chance like now to talk to you, I'm always learning something from you. And I'm learning something from me because I say it slightly different because you're here. Yeah, yeah, And sure. that interaction of the two of us enables the new thing to arrive. Uh-huh. I think. So, like, I mean, the, the idea, <laughs> like that um, idea of, like, the communal source of stuff. It, I know, like, some some of these ideas you've, you've adapted or whatever, but has some of that come, like, through insights or, like... Yeah. So, because... So you get, do you get moments where, like, just... Like yeah. it feels different or like, yeah. wow, moments. Yeah, know. all the time. Do you? And, and there's right. more this last period than any other period of my life. It's changing and moving so fast I can't keep up with it. Which oh. is disorientating, but really exciting. Okay. And, it, and, I've, and the way it works now is that I will have a question that I'm working on. Right. And I'll frame it as clearly as I can. And then at some point, sometimes immediately, sometimes a day... A week, two weeks, it suddenly starts. Or sometimes in the middle of the night, mm-hmm. and I know it started. It's like, oh, here it comes, and then bam, 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 bam. and then there's doesn't mean it's kind of like perfect or anything, but there's a flow of a new internal monologue of thinking, right. new ideas, and I know that it, I, it's a diff, it's different. It's leading to me seeing things in a new way, and I can test it out, and if it works, then it will move on and what's so exciting about what I've been working on I've been doing this for 15 years now and and the last 10 years since I 12 years since I wrote my last book I thought I'd be I'd finished five years ago but it's just going on but what's what's exciting is that all the new insights fit together it's coherent it's not like oh there's something over here and there's something else over here it's like no they're actually beginning to form a shape and a new uh, philosophy a new way of seeing what this is, mm. which feels like it's it's time for that. Yeah, and I love the way you write as well. It's it's interesting, but it's so clear. Oh, thank you. You know, thank there's, you. there's so little light there that's actually. <laughs> thank you. I, so I, I I put a lot of effort into trying to get it to the point where I can be clear, and and I'm doing that now with these thoughts of trying to how can I articulate them so they're clear. Um, yeah. And especially when they're especially when they're quite different to what people are used to. It needs to be doubly clear. It's hard. Yeah, I really think so. I mean, how many how much time I'd waste reading people like Lacan, Jack Lacan, or like you know when psychology, some psychology is just so clear, not in. Yeah, yeah. I don't know, but yeah, <laughs> and that's why I, I, you know, it's like with the retreats, it's about the experience. There's some philosophy, but it's really about ways in which you can get the experience, mm-hmm. so you, where you can actually experience that connection that communion mm-hmm. with others and and i love that and then with with my online community we'll meet up every sunday and we'll do a bit of that sometimes once a month we'll do that but then other times we're actually exploring the ideas and what's so lovely about that is that they're very tolerant of me right because i can try out hey i'm working on this and they know i won't say it particularly well probably because it's the first time i've tried to say it okay and it'll, and it'll take me Half an hour to say one thing that eventually I'll say in two lines. Right. But I need to say it in this roundabout way, and they're interested enough, and we engage, and I engage with their questions, and they've got the same sense as me. I thought there's something, there's something emerging here, that is good, and they want to be part of it. Mm-hmm. So it's it's lovely because we've got it's people all over the world, they're small, uh, but but connected to each other now, and and so different. I mean. So different. I love that because because my past has been you know I've written books which are quite academic, so some people connect because of that. I wrote uh-huh. a book on big my bestseller was on Christianity, oh, yeah. so various people connect because of that. Then I got all the non-dual thing. Various people connect because of that. I'm basically a love junkie. 
And if you come to my events, it's just one big love fest. Right. And so some people are like not into the intellect at all. They just like the love thing, and they connect to that. And then you've got all these different people all connected. It's like all the different parts of Tim connect to the different people who are there. Oh yeah, yeah. But then they connect to each other because they're all the, you know they're they're drawn by these different aspects of the, what makes it up for me. So I I love that. And it's great. I'm very lucky. Cool. So. <laughs> You spend, do you spend a lot of your waking life thinking about this stuff then? I mean, it's part, obviously... Pretty much all the time. Have you always been like that, or not? To some degree, yes. Because you're into music and stuff as well. Yes, right? so, so my attention uh, then, and, and sometimes still is, is on sort of more, is on beauty and creativity. Uh -huh. um, but that's, the, but always somewhere in the background there's been this. Never this intense. Never this intense. And I never saw... I, I studied philosophy and all that, but I never saw myself as producing a new philosophy. I never imagined I would be capable of it or I'd even try. Whoa. But that is what I'm doing. That's and, you know, and... Well, I just hope it will be of value. Well, do you think that was from, like... So you had that first glimpse when you were 12. Yeah. Were you changed by that? I mean... Oh, yeah. Like, how did, did it affect you socially? Like, was it... Did uh, it have negatives as well? I don't know. No negatives. No. Uh, that I can remember. Um, I don't know, that's the honest truth. I don't know. I, I don't know, so long ago. Oh, OK, fair enough. I can't, I'd, I'd hate to get it wrong. I, 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 I mean, it definitely changed me. One of the things I did was I wrote straight away, so I've got some of the things I wrote. Oh, so cool. that was mm. that kind of desire to express things mm -hmm. was there already. So it's what, what, you know, it's what a Tim does. You know, it's just inquires and yeah. shares. So. so you've always kind of been at a philosophical kind of nature, I suppose. I, I think it's just the curiosity. Uh, it's just, I'm very curious and therefore I try and understand more. And I want to, I want, I want to say I want to understand this as deeply as I can, but it really it's I want to experience this as deeply as I can. And the more I understand it, the deeper my experience goes. And that's what I saw when I was 12. I saw you. I could have a shift, and it was like the difference between living like this and living like this. And I was interested in living like this, so that set me off going, how can I, how can I move this again? And I found there was loads of ways of moving. I could move it in meditation, I could move it with LSD, I could move it with Tai Chi, I could move it just by living. And by thinking, I could move it, and all... and, and but but during all of my early years, it just happened. It, when it happened, I couldn't. I did stuff, and then well, it just happened. And then as I got older, it wasn't like that so much. Yeah, I was just thinking of like one of the effects of NDEs is curiosity. I was just thinking because it is rare. Most people aren't that curious about stuff. You you know, I don't suppose that. I mean, I, I was. You know, I, I was looking for answers in my 30s, I suppose, like, during my uh, 10 years before, you know, before the shift in 2012. But the curiosity, you know, it's kicked in like crazy over the last five years. Great, so. great. Okay. See, see, to me, that makes sense. Because to me, the thing you're, you're calling the shift, and I understand why you call it that, it's a good name for it. It's funny that it happened in 2012. Uh, because that's when everyone was meant to shift and it didn't. Oh, yeah, right, right. But, but you did. And so that's good. And, but to me, it's like that makes perfect sense. You had an experience and that created a higher level of the ground within your psyche mm -hmm. to, experience, to open up curiosity to take you forward. Yeah, perfect. Perfect. Go with that. Shall we leave it there? Yeah. <laughs> oh, let's do that. <laughs> I don't know how long that was. Just okay. The red button. Okay, I have to cut that.